I'm the engineer that designed this bucket and the guy who had to build it. And here's the thing, I don't even run these machines. So how do I know if it's actually any good? I've learned the hard way that what looks perfect on a screen doesn't always survive the real world. The only way to find out is to put it in the dirt and let people who actually use this stuff tell you what's wrong with it. When I used to work at a bigger manufacturer, we designed new attachments, and before the prints were even finalized, they were already selling them. Sometimes we'd get lucky, other times customers would call two weeks later wondering why their brand new product wasn't fitting right, was cracked, or bent. Then we'd be on revision three before they even got their first job done. That's the kind of shortcut I wanted to get away from. I'd rather spend a few extra weeks learning what actually works than rush into something and pretend it's perfect. I've made mistakes on this build for sure, but I've also learned a ton from the guys who run this equipment every day. The stuff you can't just pick up behind a CAD screen. So that's what this whole process has been about. Testing, listening, tweaking, and trying to build smarter. If it helps someone else avoid a few headaches along the way, then that's worth every late night in the shop. The first version of this bucket looked good on paper. I thought I nailed it. Proportions, structure, weight, everything perfect. Until I dropped it off for field testing with Connex Excavation. Just got home after work, rushed over here. We gotta go head over about an hour drive to Manitowoc. walk. Drop this off, get this thing tested up. I'm super excited for my R&D tester guy to see this thing in person. I sent him a picture, he thought it looked badass, but it just doesn't do it justice. So I dropped it off, let him run it, and waited for some feedback. And that feedback came almost immediately. Hi guys, this is Michael with Connex Excavation. He's the guy up in Manitowoc that I sent my first prototype bucket to, and he's been testing it out for what, the past two or three months? Yep, yep, two or three, two months. three months. And obviously it's seen some wear and tear. Um, he made a few comments on the amateur paint job, but we're making improvements in that department, so how? what were your thoughts uh, using the bucket for the- Thoughts on the bucket are awesome. It, uh... It's bigger than a normal dirt bucket that comes with the machine, but yet it's still smaller than a light duty material bucket. And it's yeah. perfect for the machine because the machine can handle it. You can fill this thing full of topsoil, gravel, sand, whatever you want. The machine handles it very well. It's proportioned just right for this machine. And the nice part is, is that you stand far back on it. You can still see your cutting edge when you are digging out stuff. So that's like a huge plus. It doesn't have too high of a back that you're just kind of guesstimating. I mean, it's built awesome. I mean, I put one little dent into it, but otherwise it's working awesome for us. <laughs> and then you did make a comment while we dropped it off. The first day I came up there, you picked up the bucket and you're like, all right, I, I see a problem already. <laughs> and that was the mount height that we had. For the first prototype, I had it spaced up just a little bit too high. So while he was back dragging and yep. trying to grade, he wasn't able to keep the, the skid steer in float mode. So we had to take it off, lift the bucket up, and then reset everything all the time. Yep, and that was about the only thing, and I mean, being a prototype, if that's the only thing that's complain about, that's, that's awesome, I mean. It just wasn't optimized for grading. That one detail made the whole bucket feel a little bit off balance. A few weeks later, I'm back at it, starting the revision. The only problem, I'm still driving that Subaru. I left work early that day, Took a half day, loaded about 2,000 pounds of steel into the back of my trailer and pulled off with a Subaru. Dude, I gotta get a freaking truck. I'm in this 2023 Subaru Outback pulling like 2,500 pounds of steel behind me. <laughs> All to just save a few bucks because I could have just had this this welder that I'm dropping off the steel at, he could have just sheared all it, all of it for me, but the struggle is real when you're just starting a business, man, let me tell you. Why am I still driving a Subaru? Well, because my videos don't get enough views for me to be able to afford a truck. So I dropped the steel off at the weld shop and played the waiting game again, but at least I had time to start lining up a plan, right? Connex Excavation was coming down later that week to help grade the horse lot and test the new revision, which meant I had roughly two hours to tack together a full bucket from raw material. 
<clears throat> that means I have to get one bucket tacked up in like 25 minutes. And my freaking work area is a mess from last night working on that thing. I don't even have anything cut out yet. Holy crap, dude. Every part still needed to be plasma cut, clean, beveled, and tacked together. It was one of those afternoons where the clock moves twice as fast as your hands. So I get home, I'm trying to scarf down lunch, some sweet tea, and just trying to get everything organized. Trying to beat the clock before the excavator pulls in. Spoiler alert, he showed up while I was tacking the bucket. So from that point on, it turned into a race. Okay, well, he got here and I didn't get the mount tacked up in time, but it's so close. I might just go in there and do that while he's spreading the rest of this. I'm trying to get as much content as possible for marketing and throwing it up on my website. And this guy's working crazy fast, man. I don't know if I can keep up with him. Once the grading was done, we finally had time to test fit the new bucket. The mount fit perfectly exactly where it needed to be. We put the new rev side by side the prototype and even against the factory bucket that came with the SM100. Okay, this is the second revision with the adjusted mount. And I think this might even be too low. The grass is here, but I basically made it flush with the second bend in the body. This is the bucket that Michael brought over that basically sits flush perfectly when the arms are fully rested. Well, you can't see anything there because of the sun. But that looks not as, that looks higher than that one. So I might even have to raise it up, which would not be a bad thing. Hello, Mr. Haminator. Mr. Haminator. That's when the difference really showed. The lower mount, better visibility and smoother back dragging. Dude, same thing. <laughs> how, how is that even? <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, if you could. Or can we take it over the gravel so I can see? That's exactly why I lean on operators like Michael. They live in these machines. They see what I can't. The feedback I get in one afternoon of testing is worth months of trial and error on my own. If I were to go out and buy a mini skid steer and try to learn how to operate this, it would take me years. Real testing replaces the guessing. And that's something you can't get sitting behind a CAD monitor. You don't have to be an expert in every machine to build something that works. You just have to listen to the people who are. Every tweak, every busted weld, every fix. That's tuition for the next design. This build taught me more than any drawing ever could. The dirt doesn't lie. Every scratch and dent tells you exactly what needs to be changed next time. So yeah, I'm still the engineer, but now I'm also the guy who gets to see what really works and what really doesn't. Hopefully someone watching this picks up a trick, saves a mistake, or just feels better knowing that a version one is never perfect. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.